So yeah, just um, say thanks to the organizers for uh, this conference and yeah, it's a great lineup and so I was gonna get into it. So today I'm gonna talk about uh, Watsuji, uh, Symbiosis and Satoyama. So there are three main aims of uh, this talk. So firstly, I intend to develop an ecological ethic from Watsuji's theories of uh, climate or fudo and his ethics. Secondly, to illustrate the practical application of Watsuji's ecological ethic. And thirdly, to demonstrate how this ecological ethic can contribute to environmental ethics. So structurally, there are three sections. I'm gonna begin with a literature review and talk about what others have said about what's Watsuji and environmental ethics, Watsuji and anthropocentrism, and the practicality of Watsuji's thought and illustrate my own contribution. Uh, secondly, then I'll look at Watsuji's own philosophy in terms of his climatology, his ethics, and then present my own view of his environmental ethics. And thirdly, I'll look at the concept of symbiosis in relation to Arnes, uh, Satoyama, and then Watsuji's ecological ethic, which I will develop in this talk. <laughs> okay, so in terms of literature review then, so what I want to uh, contribute, so firstly, in terms of an environmental ethic, so Steve Oden has already suggested the application of Watsuji's thought to uh, Leopold's land ethic. And just to quote him here, Watsuji's ecological philosophy is one of the most suggestive Asian resources for environmental ethics as outlined by Aldo Leopold, in which morality is enlarged so as to include not simply individual individual and individual social relations, but also the encompassing human nature relation as a major extension of practical ethics. So in terms of environmental ethic then, what I contribute is suggesting putting Watsuji into dialogue with Ness, a deep ecologist, is previously mentioned in Roman's talk, in order to supplement Watsuji's ethical philosophy. <laughs> Secondly, in relation to anthropocentrism, so John Moraldo criticized Watsuji for, in his own words, limiting ethical concerns to human beings and indulging in the same anthropocentrism as the European philosophers he severely criticizes on other grounds. However, James McRae has rejected this position and instead suggests that this interpretation of Watsuji is anthropocentric. Now, Watsuji's philosophy of the person fails to take into account the emphasis that he places on the effects of nature upon the person in his book, Fudo. And Inutsuki Yu also uh, takes the same position as McRae and takes it a step further by suggesting that this understanding provides a base for a new anthropocentric environmental ethics which considers the environment a part of human existence and integrates it into human ethics. And whilst I agree with McRae and reject Moraldo's position, I differ from Initsuka insofar as rather than suggesting a new anthropocentric environmental ethic can be developed from Watsuji's fault, I see the potential to overcome uh, anthropocentrism. So in terms of practical application then, of Watsuji's thought in relation to the environment. Uh, Bruce Jans has argued that Watsuji's concept of Fudo provides us with an alternative means to understand and address the problem of climate change. And to quote Jansen, the restoration and preservation of climate through Watsuji's thought will first keep us from well-meaning mistakes that can happen when we imagine a technological fix to an issue. And Jim Beck then has also sought to apply Watsuji's concepts of Fudo and Aidagata to a traditional Japanese architecture in terms of uh, cross-ventilation. And to quote Beck then, Watsuji's theory leads us to reformulate and reconceptualize the relationship between one room and another and the role of the corridors in maximizing the benefits of such a passive sustainable method as cross-ventilation. <laughs> However, in this talk then, by focusing on symbiosis, what I intend to do is offer a new way of applying Watsuji's theory in order to increase the relations or symbiotic relations between humans and non-humans. Okay, so in the next part then, looking at Watsuji's philosophy. So 
last night or yesterday, depending on your time zone, uh, Professor Sakai gave what I take to be quite an unfair treatment and overly critical account of what Suji and Lorenzo asked the question whether there's anything positive that we can draw from what Suji thought. And so that's what I intend to do here. So in Watsuji's book, uh, Fudo, which is often translated as climate or climate and culture, Watsuji employs the concept of Fudo in a, a technical sense in which he denotes, uh, denotes the natural environment of a given land, its climate, weather, topographic and scenic features. And what's interesting about this is that rather than as a we might find in sort of traditional uh, the sciences of treating sort of weather or climate uh, separately from uh, humans. Watsuji shows that actually we kind of exist together. And he begins by doing so uh, with the example of the phenomenology of uh, meteorological phenomena, such as the cold. So just to quote Watsuji then, when we feel the cold, we do not encounter an objective cold, which is apart from us, rather, we find ourselves in the cold. The instant that the cold is discovered, we are already outside in the cold. Therefore, the basic essence of what is present outside is not a thing or object such as the cold, but we ourselves. So the importance of this is that what Suji shows sort of the, the interrelation between uh, humans and their environment, uh, with the example of the phenomenon of the cold, but he goes on to further say that it's not simply the cold as such, but um, the environment sort of works together and depending on sort of the, the geographical structure and sort of the weather and the climate or fudo that these are alter. And he uh, explains this in a, a beautifully poetic passage where it suggests that a cold wind may be experienced as a mountain blast or the cold dry wind that sweeps through Tokyo at the end of winter. The spring breeze may be one which blows off cherry blossoms or which caresses the waves. So too, the heat of summer may be of the kind to wither rich virgin or to entice children to play merrily in the sea. So his point is that, and again, just to quote him directly, this it sort of encapsulates uh, quite nicely what he seeks to convey, that climate then is the agent by which human life is objectivized and it is here that one comprehends oneself. There is self-discovery in climate or food up. So moving on to what Suji's ethics then. So again, what Suji seeks to reinterpret what is entailed by ethics in his book, uh, Rinri Gaku and um, several other essays as well which came before and were developed into this uh, text. So here, what Suji claims, the locus of ethical problems lies not in the consciousness of the isolated individual, but precisely in the idegata or in-betweenness of person and person. So his idea is that we do not exist as uh, individuals, but always in relation to one another. And again, to quote Watsuji, both individuals and the whole subsist not in themselves, but only in the relation of each with the other. And the, so the point which I want to draw from uh, Watsuji's ethics is so his concept of uh, authenticity or honraise. So Watsuji, in a, sort of the development of this theory of Aidagata, he suggests that we have the, this double negation because to focus only on the individual is to negate our communal sense. And again, if we only focus on a community as we find in Confucianism, for example, then we negate our sense of individuality, but rather what's required is a double negation. So rather than an affirmation of both, it's a negation of both individuality and community. And through this, uh, double negation then, or negation of negation. It, what Suji says that we kind of arrive at this home ground of existence. Um, 
So just uh, to quote him then, that one can be whole only within authenticity or honraise, that is within absolute wholeness. This wholeness re reveals its basic unity in the movement that realizes the identity inherent in the non-duality between the self and other through the standpoint of difference imminent, imminent in the opposition between them. Okay, so just a conscious of time, move on to the next part. So by what I want to illustrate or develop is an environmental ethic, which I see to be implicit within a Watsuji's thought, although not developed by himself. So taken from uh, his concept of Fudo, that what's suggested is we exist in relation to our environment and we're not independent of it. And from his ethics then, so I want to suggest that we exist in an interconnected web of relations with all other forms of life. So from this double negation then, Watsuji arrives at sort of um, the home ground of existence and this view of a nothingness, which is um, kind of a Buddhist ontology. And through the, this, um, this home ground, it's kind of the realization that we don't exist as individuals, but we exist in a web of relations with others. And although in developing his ethics, Watsuji focuses only on humans, so I think it can be extended to all other life forms. So by combining Watsuji's concept of Fudo and ethics, that humans exist in relation to the ecosystem and that not only with other humans, but also with sort of um, other life forms, sort of animals, birds, uh, fish, insects, uh, trees, sort of water, uh, air, for example. So you can suggest that rather than ethics is a relation between person and person, which is what Watsuji suggests in Rinrigaku, we can take Watsuji's spot one step further and develop his position to entail that ethics is a relation between being and being. So moving on to the next section on, on symbiosis. So as Roman talked, to, I previously talked about Ness, that in his own uh, theory of uh, ecosophacy, uh, T, he suggests that we kind of go for, or should go through three stages. So traditionally, we kind of go through two from the ego, if we think of a child who doesn't really uh, recognize like other people outside of itself. And then they kind of develop a bit further and they've, they're taught by their family that you know, they should care for other people. And then if we become a bit more enlightened, we start to think about sort of other races as well. So we start to think that, oh, everybody's equal. We shouldn't uh, discriminate in terms of sort of sex or gender or race, these kind of things. But Ness says, well, why stop there? So we should um, become an ecologically extended, what he refers to, self with a capital S. And this idea entails that recognition that as humans, we have responsibility because we can kind of understand the capacities of our, our own abilities and capacities and those of other life forms. So we should take care of others too. And in order to develop this position, um, Ness says that in order to maximize self-realization or develop this self, we need maximum diversity and maximum symbiosis. And Ness's uh, count of symbiosis is uh, mutualism. So there are uh, lots of different types in uh, science or biology, but only uh, mutualism is can support an, an ethic insofar as uh, a mutualistic symbiotic relationship is one where it's equally uh, or mutually beneficial to each of the life forms or parties which are involved. So we can think of examples of a bee which uh, pollinates a flower, so it helps the, the flower reproduce. And again, it gets pollen uh, to return to its hive and to create a honey. Or again, we can think of an oxpecker bird which eats ticks from zebras, so it uh, gets gains sustenance and then it removes pests from the uh, mammals. So in Japan then, 
The symbiosis is perhaps best exemplified by the, this concept of Satoyama. And Satoyama traditionally refers to sort of mountainous landscapes in real, and life with uh, rural uh, villages. So it's kind of this uh, space in between and sort of living in relation to nature. So we can think of examples of sort of a coppice woodlands where they may be so they cut down trees, but they don't remove the root. So the tree, and they allow the tree to uh, regenerate, to grow again. And again, with uh, rice fields as well. So rice fields, of course, are artificial and perhaps like a means to uh, prevent sort of heavy rain during a tsuyu or rainy season. So by sort of creating these ditches and uh, putting uh, rice plants so that humans gain food, but simultaneously, whenever these rice um, paddies flood, they create a habitat for other life forms. So they become full with uh, frogs who can spawn. We see dragonflies lay larvae and grow and dance and mate around them. And then birds, um, a shirasagi or a harem, so they can come and uh, forage for food. So although uh, rice fields are artificially constructed. They nevertheless provide or create a habitat which wouldn't exist if it wasn't for human intervention. So we can see that these are mutually beneficial. However, so with the, the shift to alternative energy sources and sort of the desire or the ever expanding sort of needs for residential areas, that the existence of Satoyama has gone into decline. And then, so we can see exemplified with a picture from uh, Pompoko on the slide that so it's actually be, there's in the story, there's a place called Tama Hills in Tokyo, and it was a habitat of a lot of raccoons, but then humans started uh, cutting down the trees to develop it to create more housing. And unfortunately, this is based on a uh, fact and an area called Tama Hills, which is once uh, a vast area of Satoyama, has all but disappeared. Okay, so how can we bring these uh, aspects together? What relationship does Watsuji's sort of ethical, uh, ecological ethic, which I've developed, how can it contribute to Satoyama? So in order for Satoyama to prosper, it's necessary for us to respect and preserve ecosystems, which serve as shared spaces for mutual interactions. And with the, the account of an ecological ethic, which I've suggested by developing Watsuji's uh, theory further, it can provide a philosophical basis or reorientation of our thinking for the preservation of such uh, spaces or areas where symbiotic relationships and interactions can take place between uh, humans and non-human life forms. So then by advocating this ecological ethic that humans exist in relation to their environment and other life forms, that we can hopefully create a shift in thinking which will lead to an increase of mutualistic uh, symbiotic relationships. So, thank you for listening. <laughs>